what is going on everybody welcome back to a new snowrunner video today we have a little bit of a different video than normal today we'll be doing a little comparison video comparing uh, all of these scouts in snowrunner to check out which is the best overall i hope you guys enjoy we will have five different tests and yeah, enjoy the video all right so here are all of our vehicles we'll be testing today we've got a total of 10 vehicles so our first test isn't really a specific test but it's more like a little showcase of what the different customization options are for all of the vehicles so we'll give a little bit of an explanation about every vehicle uh, this is the Chevrolet CK1500 uh, one of the low tiers vehicles in the game for scouts at least that's uh, also one of the vehicles you start off with and for the customization I basically kept it quite simple I did for everything basically the highest customization options available and I chose for the tires the most expensive all-terrain option uh, for the rest gearbox is all in off-road gearbox and uh, basically the uh, visual customization i kind of customize it how i liked it so the next vehicle we have is the don 71 this one reminds me a lot like a lava I thought it was quite funny. I haven't used it, this one too much in the career mode yet. But I gotta say, it looks pretty cool. Although the performance wasn't really that great. But you will see that in the next test after we've seen everything. Okay, so next up we have the Hammer H2 customization, of course. Uh, this is one of the better uh, vehicles I enjoy in this game, uh, or at least for scouts. I gotta say it stands out and is di uh, different than what you see normally. And uh, also the sound is quite nice. Although this vehicle uh, performed about average, I would say, in the test. It wasn't great on some of the tests, but it wasn't bad neither. So I think it's good for when you're starting out with the game. If you can upgrade, then you would definitely want to do that later on. So I can already give you that on this one. But you can, of course, judge for yourself after seeing the gameplay. Okay, and next up we have the International Load Star 1700. I gotta say this is actually one of the vehicles I didn't expect at all to perform so well. It was actually really surprising how well it did all of the tests I had I've done for this video. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm definitely gonna get this sometime in my career as well. I haven't played with it before, although I played with a mod which had four-wheel steering, quad steering I think it was called. I was also really impressed about that. It turns out the stock vehicle is actually really good as well. Uh, definitely surprised me. So next up we got the Scout 800, which is a vehicle which looks like it is really nice from the outside. And it also was supposed to be one of the better Scouts you could find on one of the Michigan maps in a career mode. Uh, and I did actually find it uh, there, but I already kind of noticed there it was a little bit easy to roll from time to time when playing. So yeah, I, I don't know. It didn't really perform that well here neither. So kind of got a mixed bag about this one. Uh, although I really like the looks of it, so that compensates it a little bit for me, I guess. So next up we got the Gen 39 Marshall, which was, if I say so correctly, DLC which you would get for pre-ordering SnowRunner. Or it was part of the Deluxe Slash Premium Edition, I'm not too sure about that, you know, in the comments if you know. But anyway, this was quite a decent vehicle actually. They didn't do all of the tests uh, i think like one or so which i'm not gonna spoil spoil just yet but 
uh, there were a lot of uh, these vehicles which failed. But yeah, I like the looks of it. It got some huge tires. It did quite well overall. Not too bad if I say so. Alright, so next up we got the Can L04F. And uh, this is actually one of the vehicles I didn't expect at all to perform as well as it did. Mainly because it just likes, it looks like a minivan which won't have a lot of power. But I can say, uh, tell you that this is quite the opposite of that. And uh, next up we have the TUZ166. I gotta say this one is one of the vehicles I would have liked to see perform better. As I like the looks of it, uh, although the performance isn't really up to par at all. Uh, which makes it for uh, actually a quite sad vehicle as I like the looks of it but the performance is just not there. It also had some kind of a weird, I think it's a bug, with the transmission where Every time you would reach the fourth gear, if I say so correctly, then it downshifts automatically to the first gear again. So I don't know what's up with that. I did choose a little bit of different transmission, so maybe it's that. Although I am not too sure. It was also one of the only vehicles that did this. I don't know what it is. Okay, so next up we have the second to last vehicle, the TUZ420 Tetherin. This is actually uh, one of the more high-end vehicles in the scouts department. It is an 8x8, as you can see here. I think I don't explain a whole lot that this is one of the better vehicles. And it pretty much uh, didn't have any troubles at all. So, yeah, you will see this one probably a lot on top. At least in the top 3 or something like that. And last but not least, we have the Yar 87. This will be probably one of the main competitors for the TUZ420 Tetherin, as this is a 6x6 and it matches the power of the Tetherin. I'm going to call it like that for short. So yeah, this one also performed quite well. I think it didn't really pass all of the tests, uh, maybe like one or something, but for the rest, did pretty well if you ask me. Okay, so we arrived at our first actual test. This test will be a test with all of the vehicles crossing the water and uh, seeing how far they get. This uh, Chevrolet CK1500, which we started out on, did do for the, pretty well for the first part. Although, as you can see, as we near the, the middle of the water, then it just floats away as it has not enough traction. Next up we have the Don 71 taking a shot at through this and it didn't really go that well. Just ended up like most of the other vehicles to be honest. Not getting enough traction and trending there. Next up was the Hummer H2. This one was actually a really close call, just like the Dawn 71, but it sadly just didn't get enough traction at the end, so it uh, went floating into the river as well, being uh, left stranded. Next up we got the International Lodestar 1700. This one came actually also quite close, uh, right about halfway it lost traction 
and it ended up in a big battle of other vehicles which didn't succeed to get there. Next up we got the Scout 800, this one also came really close and probably one of the closest vehicle we have gotten so far. Only uh, the last part it didn't manage to get enough grip drive onto the land so it slided back into the water which was kind of a bummer uh, as it could have been one of the only vehicles actually being able to do this test. Next up we got the Can 29 Marshall, actually one of the only vehicles so far which managed to get through there and you could just see that it had some trouble. Halfway down there you could see it had almost severe damage levels and it was also going a lot sideways but it managed to get grip and drive out of there without any problems. Okay so next up we have the Can L04. F, one of the only vehicles which managed to get through the, onto the other side of the water. Didn't expect it at all, as it's of course a freaking minivan, but surely enough it did it somehow. Next up we got the TUZ-166 and this one didn't do too well. It also actually almost tipped over, you can see in the footage. It was just so much water for such a light car that it couldn't handle it. And it was also catching a lot of damage, so it actually died because it didn't come further because of engine broke down. I don't know if it would have come maybe further if it didn't. I don't really think so, as it was also getting tipped over almost. Next up we got the TUZ for throwing tethering and I already guessed it this thing went through it like no problems at all and uh, it was just a piece of cake for this one. And last but not least we have the YAR87. Uh, this one actually I expected to, uh, it to be uh, to get through the water really easily but uh, it actually did pro prove me wrong as at the very end of the water it almost got stuck because it didn't have enough traction and power I assume. So that was a little bit of a surprise for me as I wasn't expecting that. So these were the vehicles which managed to make it through. And now let's move on to the next test. So our first test is a obstacle course made out of tubes. And we have for the first round the Chevrolet CK1500, if I say so correctly. Almost managed to make it through, but it tipped over almost the end. Next up we got the Dawn 71, which was honestly just a complete failure. Uh, it just wouldn't get over the first few pipes. So yeah, it's not really looking too good for this vehicle so far, if I'm being honest. Next up we got the Hammer H2, which was actually the first vehicle to make it to the other side without getting stuck or anything like that. Dead. Next up is the International Lodestar 1700. This is one of the trucks which managed to make it over these steel, over these tubes uh, without any issues really. It did get some damage. Next up we got the Scout 800. In the beginning I was a little bit afraid we wouldn't get anywhere as we almost already messed it up right there. But I was able to recover it and uh, get actually almost towards the end until our wheelbase wasn't long enough anymore and we got stuck onto one of those pipes. Which is a bummer but yeah to be honest it's better than getting stuck in the beginning so I'm not too mad about it. Next up we got the CAN 39 Marshall and this truck just did it like it was nothing. Could just really see that it didn't have any issues with this, these obstacles at all.
Next up is the Can L04F. This one actually didn't perform that well. It got really, really soon stuck on one of those pipes. So yeah, it was game over quite quickly for that one. So next up is the TUZ-166. Uh, this one actually performed pretty decent, I would say. It didn't have everywhere as much power as you might want to need on a parkour like this. But you could notice that the wheelbase is too short, as we have seen on other vehicles so far. They just get stuck at some point on pipes and then it's basically game over. Next up we got the TUZ420 Tethering. This one managed to get over it without any issues really. I don't think I need to explain much more about this one. And last but not least we have the ER87 which also didn't have any problems at all getting through this obstacle course. Alright, moving on to the next challenge, uh, here we've got a little bit of a mountain climb, uh, it's a bit higher than the other obstacle course, which you can also see in the background. Uh, I gotta say, most vehicles didn't have too many problems, just like the CK1500. Next up is the Don 71. This one didn't really go that well. It already had a little bit of a rough start and was struggling on really easy parts for what it looked like. And you could also see that even that stopped all the way midway through the climb. So yeah, this vehicle isn't really that powerful and it really shows in this test. Next up we got the Hummer H2, this one actually didn't have any problems at all, it went over it like there was no problem, just one little slowdown but way better than the other one so far. Next up we got the International Lodestar 1700, this was also one of the vehicles which didn't have any issues with this upslope course, only a bit of a slow start. Next up we got the Scout 800 and as you can see in the footage this one managed to make it through without any problems. Next up we got the CAN 39 Marshall and you can just see how smoothly this vehicle rolls over this obstacle course. It didn't really have any problems at all. Next up we got the CAN L04F and it is still holding up quite well against the other vehicle, especially for its size, still quite surprised it is doing that this well. Next up we got the TUZ-166 and sadly this vehicle is still not performing as well as it should be. As you can see in the first part it was just standing still for a few seconds getting no power at all and I don't know what it is with that gearbox it is for sure malfunctioning it stayed the whole first part in first gear and normally it would have been in a higher gear way 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 earlier so I don't know what's up with that next up we got the TUZ420 Tethering and this one uh, like in all the other tests didn't have any issues at all and went over this like it was nothing. And last but not least we have the Yar 87 which also managed to get through this obstacle without any issues. And we have arrived at our last test for this video. This uh, includes vehicles having to go through puddles of water getting bigger and bigger and deeper every time they get through one. Uh, first up we got the Chevrolet CK1500. This one managed to make it to the end, although not completely, as it reached the last one, but it didn't manage to get out of it, which is kind of a bummer, as it uh, would have been one of the few vehicles which actually managed to get through this one. Next up we got the Dawn 71, and in the beginning we had a bit of a rough start, but uh, later on it managed to get up to speed again and it actually managed to complete the whole course and drive out of it under its own power in comparison to the CK1500. It didn't get stuck so I gotta say it's quite impressive that this vehicle managed to make it. Uh, I wouldn't have placed my bets on this one 
judging by the other tests that we did, it wasn't really co uh, performing that well, but at least it still has some good points to it. Next up we got the Hammer H2, and for this one it actually didn't last too long, it got at first pedal it got actually already kind of stuck, and from there on it didn't really get any better. And yeah, it eventually ended up getting stuck on one of those little bumps. Next up, we get the International Lodestar Star 1700, and this one had a, also a rough start because of the weight on the back. And about halfway through the obstacle course, it just got stuck and wasn't moving anymore. Next up we got the Scout 800 and this one was probably by far the worst attempt out of them all. Just didn't get out of the first battle. Uh, my guess is because it is too top heavy uh, due to the attachment which is on the roof. Next up we got the Can 39 Marshall and this is one of the few vehicles which managed to get through the whole obstacle course without any issues. It was maybe a little bit on the slow side but the point is it got through it and uh, out of it with its own power and that's what matters in this test right here next up we got the can l04f and this one actually didn't perform that well neither further than the first pedal uh, because the wheel base was not long enough as you can see in the footage Next up we got the TUZ-166 which was actually doing quite well, the only thing that kept it from completing this challenge is at every puddle uh, it was getting water damage and that made it break the engine at almost the end I think it was. Uh, so yeah, that's actually quite a bummer as it had a pretty good chance to get a little bit further and maybe even get towards the end. Next up we got the TUZ 420 Tetran and this one as you guys already know I managed to get through this one easily It barely touched the water at some point uh, just because it is so long and big so it was really no issue for this one Last vehicle we got for today is the YAR87 uh, This one actually also managed to make it uh, without any issues um, at the end it was struggling a little bit and well, I let the remaining footage of the ER87 uh, some bonus footage roll. I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was a video which took me way too long to make, especially in the editing part. It took me about like two or three weeks at least. Um, and you might also be wondering why is this video up so late? And there has a reason for it, actually multiple ones. Uh, in May I was still in the phase of uh, getting all of my schoolwork done so I could finish my year and uh, yeah after that I decided to upgrade my PC which I will show some photos and videos of right now on the screen um, so yeah I'm pretty happy with that and of course the editing part took me some time as well uh, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, that I will see you guys in a new one. Later.